Jenny Garner, and I'm the library director of the North Liberty Library in North Liberty, Iowa. There were so many changes. Um, immediately, you know, March hit, uh, we got the message that we were changing all of our operations across the city um, and had a quick department head meeting to decide what that was going to look like and what each department would do, how we would respond. And literally overnight, our doors were locked, which is so counterintuitive to everything that public libraries do. And we began looking at how we could um, continue to keep the library open to the public while the doors were locked. So um, curbside started almost immediately. We had to buy a Zoom account, um, of course, like everyone else. And we had a daily meeting. Um, first thing in the morning every day, our staff met so that all of our staff could stay connected, whether we were working in the building or from home. And the one thing that um, my city administrator did, our city administrator here, we had a weekly meeting for department heads every week. Um, and every time we had that meeting, at the end of the meeting, the last thing he said was, is there anything you need from me? What can I do to help support you emotionally and mentally right now? So I adopted that as well because I, it felt so good just to have him say that. And that was probably one of the hardest things as an administrator, just to feel that we were supporting our staff and their well-being, their emotional well-being uh, as we're trying to work through this. You know, there's tears and there's um, wondering if we're doing the right thing all the time, you know, going through this with staff. We did follow a lot of advice, including stuff coming from Realm to, uh, on how we were gonna quarantine our materials. We did not unlock the doors until June 1st of this year. So we were closed for over, you know, almost 14 months. Um, and throughout that time, what it, we continued to add new services. Um, of course, we did a lot of programming. We tried many different things. The programmers did a lot of live programs. Um, and soon, and they did a lot of it. And they welcomed people into their homes. They did, they cooked in their kitchens and showed people how to cook and they folded sheets. They learned how to make dog toys out of t old t-shirts and you know, um, all the things that we want to help keep people connected and busy with the library. Um, we also called people. We, as a small town library, we knew that there are people who sometimes come here just to see people. Um, and stop by. There are people who spent hours here a day, sometimes some of our retired folks and other people. Um, and we knew that they, those marginalized people might just need the connection of a voice. So we um, kind of all identified folks that might need that and started calling. And people really, really appreciated that. Um, those are the things that libraries, I think we do to connect people all the time. So one thing we were tasked with doing it was our before and after school program was tasked with creating an emergency child care for uh, local health care providers and um, our emergency workers. And then um, if there was room, which there was uh, our city staff uh, and our staff did some fun things with them. We have a guinea pig who lives in our library, who has her own Instagram page. Um, and she went down and they, they built an obstacle course for her. So lots and lots of stuff happened here. Um, our masks went on and our shields went up um, just for work in the building. Um, I think the biggest impact on staff was probably just their emotional well-being and making sure that um, they were taking care of themselves so that they could take care of everyone else. You know, as librarians, we deal with a lot of secondary drama. Um, you know, in our in our daily work, so they had some training in that already we we do pretty regular training with our staff and we we quite commonly do things for stress and anxiety and how we can take care of ourselves self-care um, and I I think the big thing was I, I said to them at the very beginning give yourselves grace um, you know if you're working from home and you you just can't make through an eight-hour day that's okay it's okay right now to not do an eight hour day from home. It's okay if you need to get up and go sit outside of a cup of coffee or take a walk with your pup or, or by yourself or whatever you need um, just to, to be okay. Because there were a lot of other things that happened during the pandemic, as we well know, social justice across the country was you know, a huge um, impact. And so our staff was looking, seeking ways to also um, do that, you know, making our statements about social justice and equity and diversity in our community. Um, they did a lot outside of outdoor things last summer during the peaceful protests that were going on in our communities. 
Um, so just a lot of ways that we, we know that libraries already connect, um, but new ways to find those connections for folks. The biggest thing in my opinion that I feel that personally and also from the library perspective that we've learned is that people are resilient. We will adapt, but moreover, libraries um, are used to change. We're used to adapting and, and we're going to continue to thrive because we know how to do that already. Um, I think, you know, across industries, we saw that people were able to adapt and change what they did. You know, you saw restaurants doing curbside and changing the way they, they operated when they were able to be open um, and, and other industries, but for, li for libraries, it's just really second nature. Um, so while it was hard and, and the work was really hard, I, th I just think it's about adapting. And then the other thing I think that we all need to remember is that taking care of our biggest commodity, which is our people, the staff that we have is, is number one.